Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. Over the course of the 20th century, the Smith & Wesson m and Military and Police Revolver, became the most ubiquitous and common service pistol for police and military service in the world, and they made millions of them. It all started in 1899, where the basic layout was established and has not changed until this day, although there have been improvements, changes in detail, streamlining for manufacturing purposes, etc. The example we're looking at is a model 1905 round butt, which kind of surprised me because I thought all the 1905s were square butts, but apparently I was wrong. This one was made in 1919, and it's a very original gun with the original finish and grips, and uh, it's a pip. I shot it today and quite enjoyed it. Before we get too far into the weeds, shout out to my supporters on Patreon. This all costs money and your contributions help more than you know. I'd also like to thank channel benefactors like the lovely fellow who donated this revolver to the channel. So thank you all very much. Um, you all help in innumerable ways and I'm very grateful. So the 1899 went through a series of changes and different model numbers, 1902, 1905, and uh, gradually came to be known as the M&P, or the Victory, and the official nomenclature of 38 hand ejector. They're available in a variety of barrel lengths, mostly four and six inch in service configuration. Although over the years, barrels from two to eight inches were were available and um it was known as the smith and wesson victory which were made for world war ii um the hand ejector the military police and in 1957 when smith and wesson rationalized their model nomenclature it became known as the m model 10 and um it was still quite recognizable in 1957 as the original gun from 1899. Why mess with success? Let's have a look at it on the tabletop. So the M&P is not a petite gun being nine inches long and five inches high, all steel construction, so it's not lightweight, maybe 26 ounces or so. Now this being an early gun, you can see it has the mushroom head extractor, so-called, which is rather nice if you have a stuck cartridge you need to get out but it also necessitates this cut under the barrel. So Smith & Wesson did away with it in around 1928. This being a 1919 gun, it still has it. It has the typical front sight that was used all the way through World War II and a trough and groove rear sight, which while very elegant looking is extremely tiny. And the sight picture is kind of dreadful. Now, if you do manage to use the sights, it's extremely accurate and it's dead on to point of aim, which is nice. And you can see there's an assembly number inside the frame where later guns will be marked with a model number. Uh, the hammer has the skinny checkered hammer, which is kind of almost getting a little slippery. <laughs> The trigger is narrow and smooth, and they did get that much right. I much prefer, prefer a smooth trigger on a double action. Uh, these are the original grips with the recessed Smith & Wesson logo, which is something I had not seen in person before. It is, of course, a five screw because it's old. And um, the trigger pull is, as you might expect from an old Smith & Wesson, very, very smooth. Quite nice. It's about nine pounds, according to the handy-dandy Lyman trigger gauge, 
and the single action is very short, very crisp, and breaks at two and a half pounds. So, altogether very nice. One thing I had not known was that these early guns do not have much, if anything, in the way of a logo. I don't think there was ever a logo here. Certainly this gun has not been refinished. <laughs> but all in all, just a nice old gun. Uh, the grip I find suboptimal, which is why there's such a big aftermarket for grips and things like the Tyler T-Grip adapter, because a lot of people are with me on that. And you may notice in the shooting video me having to shift my grip between shots. It's really not made for people with hands my size. Now in use, this would have been, at this time, 1919, been intended to be fired single action. Because double action was, you know, the last ditch, oh my god thing at point blank range. But even single action with those sights, you can tell this was more intended for point shooting than using the sights. Because in a combat situation, I cannot imagine them being useful. This is also obviously a civilian gun post-war production. It has no police rack numbers or identifiers on it, no government markings of any kind, and a serial number indicates manufacture in 1919, as I may have mentioned, and uh, it's just a good basic surface pistol, and uh, it's, in, it's really quite nice. And despite the dreadful sights, it does shoot very well indeed. And uh, as I said, quite accurately. It's a really nice shooting gun. It could use better sights, but it is a really nice shooting gun. It's in really good condition. There's no end play. Cylinder locks up nice and tight. Everything is really just as it should be. And um, guns in this cosmetic condition have been selling recently on Gun Broker for between two and three hundred dollars. So it's quite an attainable gun. And uh, to my sick way of thinking, that makes it an excellent candidate for modification, being both very common and not very expensive. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with this gun. Maybe nothing. But it was donated to the channel, for which I thank you very much. And uh, I'm really pleased to have it. It's a, uh, it's a great old gun. So, that's it for this time. I hope this finds you well. Stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.